Ahead of unveiling the new iPad Pro 13-inch 2024, Apple has hyping up its Let Loose launch event as a different kind of Apple event and the most important iPad launch since the original iPad. And now that the dust has settled, it seems that the hype was largely justified. The iPad Pro 13-inch along with 11-inch model that was also announced is an incredibly accomplished and versatile device that, as the marketing spell that accompanies it makes clear, features plenty of firsts and best is the first time an Apple M-Class chip has debuted in an iPad rather than a Mac, it's the thinnest ever Apple device and it has the best screen you can get on a tablet. The iPad Pro 13-inch is clearly a product made by a market leader at the top of its game. It's a stunning bit of kit that's packed with cutting-edge tech and is a shoe-in for the best tablet you can buy in 2024 for its specs alone. But this also means, somewhat counterintuitively, that this is not a tablet for everyone. For a start along with the lofty specs, features and performance claims Apple is making for the iPad Pro 13-inch comes an equally sky-high price tag, $1,299 for the base model and $2,199 is for max specs model. That price immediately puts it out of the reach of many people and this is clearly not a tablet that's designed for just browsing the web and watching videos on the couch. The fact that the new iPad Pro is also a showcase for Apple's brand new M4 chip suggests to me that this isn't a tablet that's simply designed to replace your older iPad. Amazon Kindle or Galaxy Tab but a device that's designed to replace your MacBook and when put into that context, the price of the iPad Pro is much more understandable. If you are not looking for the top of the range tablet to replace your laptop and just want something more affordable for casual tasks, the new iPad Air 6 will be much more appealing and it comes with some neat features of its own. However, if you are after an accomplished with a kit that can handle some seriously heavy workloads including video editing and music production while also coming in an incredibly thin and light form factor, then the iPad Pro 13-inch could prove to be a very sound investment indeed. If, like me, you were surprised to see the M4 chip debuted in the new iPad Pro rather than in a Mac, the new design of this tablet goes some way towards explaining the decision. According to Apple, both the incredibly thin body and the tandem OLED technology that powers the new Ultra Retina Exeter display of the new iPad Pros are only possible thanks to advancement with the M4 chip, primarily around energy efficiency, thermal performance, and a new and improved 10-core GPU and new display engine to handle the more demanding screen. Apple claims that the M4 chip can provide the same level of performance as the M2 chip using half the power. Of course, the M4 chip can also provide much higher performance than the M2, but this level of power efficiency has allowed Apple to make the iPad Pro 13-inch incredibly thin and light with dimensions of 281.6 by 2. 115.5 by 5.1 mm and weight of 579 grams. This is thinner than the 5.9 mm thickness of the iPad Pro 11 2022 and noticeably thinner than the 6.4 mm of the iPad Pro 12.9 2022. In fact, Apple goes as far as to say that the iPad Pro 13 inch is the thinnest device it's ever made. It certainly feels that way, coating dimensions of won't give you a real idea of just how thin the iPad Pro 13-inch 24 is. You need to see it and feel it for yourself. Despite having a larger display than the previous model, the 13-inch iPad Pro is easily portable especially if you are used to carrying around a 13-inch laptop. As for Apple's claims that it's the thinnest device it's ever made, I put it next to an AirTag 
the thinnest Apple product I had to hand and the iPad Pro 13 inch 24 is indeed thinner even if only just. This is quite the achievement considering that one of these devices is a premium and powerful tablet computer and the other is essentially a location tracker that's designed to be as universe strip as possible when attached to your belongings. Having such a thin, light and expensive device might be a bit concerning for some and the iPhone 6 Plus will still be in a lot of people's mind even after all those years. The good news is that despite its incredibly slim design, the iPad Pro 13 inch 2024 feels impressively robust and while you won't want to go throwing it around as you might a cheap and cheerful Android tablet that costs a fifth of the price, you won't feel like you are handling a delicate artifact that could shatter at any moment. As you might expect, a range of covers and protective cases are available for the iPad Pro 13 inch from Apple itself and third parties like Logitech. I'd certainly recommend buying one to help protect your expensive purchase, especially as many such as Apple's new Magic Keyboard add additional features to the tablet. The body of the iPad Pro 13 inch 24 is made with 100% recycled aluminium and not only is this good for the environment, but it helps give the iPad Pro a solid and dependable feel without being too heavy. The iPad Pro is available in two colors, silver and space black, which is the version I was sent and which you can see pictured toward the, this review. It doesn't, however, seem to have the same clever fingerprint proof material found with certain colors of the latest MacBook Air, which Apple terms a breakthrough anodization seal to reduce fingerprints. And after only a short while, the back of the iPad Pro was dotted with fingerprints. The iPad Pro 13 inch 24 has four built in speakers along with four microphones. On the right hand side, when you are holding the tablet, in portrait orientation are the volume buttons, and at the top of is the power button. At the bottom is a Thunderbolt 3 USB 4 port that can be used for charging and connecting peripherals such as USB C monitors or external hard drivers with data transfer speed up to 40 Gbps. I still believe that the move from Apple's proprietary lightning port to the much more widely used USB-C for its product including iPads and iPhones is the right consumer friendly move that allows you easily connect different chargers and peripherals. It should be noted that in Europe the iPad Pro does not come with a charger just the cable that reduces packaging and also e-waste as there is good chance that people will already have a USB-C charger lying around. The cable Apple provides is only USB 2.0 however which means you won't get anywhere near the maximum data transfer rates the iPad Pro's USB-C port is capable of. This feels like a bit of a mean decision on Apple's part especially considering how expensive the iPad Pro 13 inch is. A magnetic smart connector runs along the right hand side of the iPad Pro 13 inch and this is used to connect and charge compatible accessories like the new Apple Pencil Pro and Magic Keyboard. The use of this new smart connector however means the older Apple Pencil does not work with this iPad Pro. When it comes to the cameras, there is both good and bad news. The good news is that 2MP ultra-wide front camera has been moved to the right hand side which means that when you use the iPad Pro in landscape orientation, the camera is at the top of the screen. This makes video calls much more comfortable and intuitive and logging in via Face ID also feels easier. This is a design upgrade that many iPad Pro owners had been asking for and it is very welcome. What is less good news, however, is that on the rear cameras, 12 megapixel f1.8 rear camera that can film up to 4K at 60 FPS with a LiDAR sensor to assist with autofocus and an adaptive true tone flash, which Apple claims improves document scanning by using AI to detect when you are taking shots of a paper document and removing shadows from images by taking multiple shots.
Meanwhile, the LiDAR camera is also used for 3D and spatial awareness, allowing the iPad Pro to scan rooms and identify objects and allows for augmented reality apps to cleverly overlay virtual objects in the real world when you are looking at the iPad Pro's screen. Why isn't this great news? Well, you might notice that the new iPad Pro actually comes with one less rear camera. That's right, the iPad Pro 13-inch 2024 and the 11-inch model don't have the ultra-wide camera found on previous models. While Apple hasn't commented on why it decided to drop this camera, it could be due to Apple's desire to slim down this model or even to stop the price tag being too high. Regardless of Apple's reasons, some users will likely be disappointed by this move. Apple, however, suggests that thanks to the combination of the 12 megapixel camera, the LiDAR sensor, and the M4 image processing prowess, you you will still be able to take wide angles short that look good although while i'm not a professional photographer i imagine the results won't be able to quite match a dedicated ultra wide angle lens the ipad pro 13 inch 2024 is the best tablet apple has ever made and the company has clearly thrown everything at it you get an amazing oled screen a powerful m4 chip and a ridiculously thin and light design and if money is no object this is an incredible bit of kit However, for the vast majority of us, money is an object and a very important one and it's hard to justify the huge price tag unless you are going to be using this as a laptop or desktop replacement for serious creative workloads. If you just want a tablet for relaxing on the couch and scrolling the web, this isn't for you. Check out the new iPad Air 2024 instead.